Hey guys, welcome back. This is week number two in the guitar lesson month here at Fountainhead TV where I give you a new guitar lesson every day. And we are going to focus on four different topics. So each week has one topic. Last week we had hybrid picking and we went really deep into that. And this week we're going to start working on our fretboard knowledge. So maybe that, that is something where some of you will just hit pause and be like, ugh, boring, don't need it. You know, give me the shred stuff, give me the, the sick licks, <laughs> whatever. Um, and yeah, and I, I got you, I got you. You know, there will be sick licks forthcoming. But fretboard knowledge, man, it's so important. It's just the bread and butter of everything you do as a guitar player. Yeah, okay, fair enough. There are a few selected individuals out there who just play purely by ear and they whenever you play something to them their ears are so good and so developed they can just immediately play it back on their guitars i've seen people like that it's amazing but uh that doesn't mean that they don't have fretboard knowledge or theory they may be playing by ear but they know exactly where to go to create a certain sound and so a lot of people have this misconception that fretboard knowledge means thinking theoretically which is not true. You can have perfect fretboard knowledge if there's such a thing and still don't think about theory at all and vice versa. You know, um, I know people, I've had people sit in Skype lessons with me who <laughs> are, who had amazing technique and, you know, very well uh, rounded, not well rounded, but well going careers where they would be playing in, you know, decently successful bands. Um, and, they were maybe even able to play my own music better, uh, back to me better or you know cleaner than I could. But at the same time, they didn't know what I was talking about if I asked them to play a simple B note on the low E string because they just you know never learned to do that. Um, or you know they would be having these amazing techniques but when i asked them to just play the simple c major scale up and down you know their faces would turn red and they would just stumble around hitting random notes it's like what are you doing you know you're coming at it from the wrong angle because if you are learning purely by muscle memory meaning that you that all you do is memorize physical movements on the guitar then you will be severely limited in your development why because then you can't react or you can only react very badly um, to incoming changes so for example if you or let's just talk about me as a teenager like i i would be sitting in my room practicing guitar all day what but all i would be practicing is technique and uh maybe songs that i would want to learn or licks and so i would learn these purely by a muscle memory i'd have no idea what i was doing otherwise not even knowing which notes i was playing at that time um and then when I would go into re rehearsal with my band and just the timing of the drummer would just sli be slightly off or we would be playing it in a different time signature or the, somebody suggested a key change, whatever it was, I would be completely lost because these things that I had been learning purely from muscle memory, they wouldn't work anymore. And maybe that's something that a few of you guys out there um, can relate to. Maybe it has happened to you. But that's the thing that I want to talk about. I have been, as a guitar teacher, I've been sitting in front of these very talented and dedicated people over and over who are just amazingly gifted technically and um, very hardworking. But they just don't know left from right on their guitars once you take away their muscle memory-based licks, um, which is terrible because they usually they came to me asking for advice in how to um, be more creative, how to build their own their own style, how to be unique as a guitar player, how to write better music, all these things. And they didn't realize that the answer to that is always closely related to how well they know their instrument. Um, let me explain. So for example, if you are if you're improvising, um, if you don't want to be stumbling around blindly 
searching for a node that works, you have to have fretboard knowledge. You have to know where to go and where not to go. You have to know the intervals, which intervals work in which context. And then, you know, as a composer, if the same thing, just, you know, uh, not in real time. You're searching for something. You you have an input. I want to do this. Um, and then you have to search blindly for something that gets, you know, the close, that is the closest to what you hear in your head. The more fretboard knowledge you have, the quicker and more accurately you can respond to those ch challenges. Right? Dramatic pause. <laughs> Mic drop. Um, I know we're talking about, about this stuff an awful lot without any playing, but I, I'll get to that. I think this is just really, really important. Get your fucking fretboard knowledge under, under control. You know, I was the worst at this stuff, and even I got halfway decent at it over the years. So, for example, if, and I know for a fact that there are a few of you out there who, you know, you can play a Spawn of Possession song, fine, from Tab, but then you don't even know the notes on your fucking fretboard. Fix that shit. You know, um, the week has seven days. Uh, I have seven strings. Maybe you guys have six. Doesn't matter. Then you just rest on the on the seventh day. You know, if it was good enough for God, you can do it too. So um, <laughs> what I what I'm talking about is you can just set yourself one string for one day of the week to learn by heart, and you you just I don't know draw a diagram, just learn it by heart. Um, have somebody ask you and uh, you know critique you and uh, check your results basically prepare prepare this as if you were preparing for a math test in college right it's that simple you just get it done whatever whatever it takes uh, you will be happy you did it so that being said now moving on to actual fretboard knowledge so how do we how do we uh, bridge the gap from let's say we picked a C major scale three notes per string? Everybody should be familiar with that. All right, so assuming that we just learned this as a succession of physical movements and we have no idea what we're doing otherwise, how do we bridge the gap? How we get how do we get from just having this as a physics like stored on a hard drive as a succession of physical movements to actually knowing the scale so well that we can visualize it on the fretboard and we can without preparation without a plan just go You got super sloppy in end, but you get the idea. You know, I can. Um, I'm not the world's greatest improviser, but I can just, um, in the confines of the scale that I picked as an example, I can just make music. I can improvise, and I can just see where my inspiration takes me. And so, uh, how do you do that? How do you get closer to that? And to me, the answer is um, taking care of the intervals, playing more specifically, playing intervals in sequence. And that is something that helped me massively when I started doing it. And so what I what do I mean by that? So you have within the octave, you have the interval of a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, right? Um, if we don't count the octave, those are the intervals that we have. And you want to know this scale in through the prism of these intervals. At any time, on any note, you want to be able to say, I want to play a second, a major second, or a minor second, depending on where you are in the scale. Or a sixth, <clears throat> minor or major, depending on where you are in the scale. Or a perfect fifth, or maybe, you know, if you're at that point in the scale, um, it, it's going to be, uh, you know, a flat fifth. All these things you want to be able to just have a solid grip on. So what I will do is I'm going to play through a sequence of these intervals up and down the scale. <clears throat> Not going to be you know shredding your face of just showing you the exercises that I did to you know to make this work for myself. I'm going to play through all of these combinations really quickly. And you will see that. Um, they each, each of those have their individual technical hurdles and challenges, but that's not really what you're focusing on today. So here goes. Mm -hmm. 
seconds. And then obviously you want to do a descending. And moving on to thirds. Then fourths. Never tough one. Sixths. Oh, made a, made a mistake. Right. See, this is, you know, this is life. I can happen. Sometimes you are not as solid in those as you think. There you go. <laughs> Case in point. So now sevens. <laughs> And those will keep you occupied for a long time. And um, once you can do that, once you have um, built that facility in one position of the scale, then you should be going on to doing the same thing in the next position and the next position and the next position until you can do it all over the fretboard. Again, like blazing through it in terms of speed is not as important at this point. It's about building that uh, mental muscle where you can not only have your fingers memorize the movements, but also your eye recognize the spots on the fretboard and your mind thinking ahead of where you, can you go, where do you want to go. Do you remember the sound of the intervals and which one is the one that comes to mind right now that you want to do? So this Exercise helps with all of those things. And it's not something that you work on, master, bring up to speed, like some lick that you've learned, and then forget about it. This is something you have to work on continuously. You, know? uh, you can do it as a warm-up exercise daily. You can do it as part of a practice regimen if you have one. And sometimes, like in my case, um, you, do, you do a lot of that stuff for a period of time and build your technique and your fretboard knowledge that way. And then you don't think about it for years. And then you want to do a lesson on it. And um, then you suddenly realize like seconds before hitting the record button, oh shit, I've never really taken the time to go through the sixth and seventh intervals in that way. 
well, <laughs> you know, that also happens that uh, it's not something that you do one time master and then you got it under your belt. It's something that you work on continuously and you can still get better and better and better. And it gets you closer and closer to uh, the music in your head that you want to make. And it's a beautiful thing. So that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll be uploading another video, a shorter one with less talking, I promise, um, tomorrow. Same time. Again, we are in the 30 days of guitar lessons here. Please, if you like this content, if this was helpful, like and subscribe. And most importantly, ring the bell so you get notified when the next video is out. Uh, otherwise, you will just get lost in the sea of YouTube content easily and um yeah that's it for today if you want to book a skype lesson with me you can reach me through social media and we can talk about anything else uh because there's so many things that i hopefully can help you with um just don't hesitate to let me know to drop me a message on so social media which is also where i will be posting the tabs for the next licks that will be coming up so for now i'm out peace have a great night Bye-bye.